Nearly one year on from the start of the conflict, NATO members meet to discuss more weapons for Ukraine with concerns Kyiv is using them faster than they can be supplied. To the war in Ukraine now, and the NATO Secretary General says allies are talking about how to increase support for Ukraine at a meeting of defense ministers. Jens Stoltenberg says Ukraine is using up ammunition faster than it's being provided and has called on member countries to increase production. Today, the Kremlin said NATO demonstrated its hostility towards Russia every day and was becoming more and more involved in the conflict in Ukraine. Here's Jens Stoltenberg's opening remarks at that meeting. NATO allies are providing unprecedented support to Ukraine to help uphold its right of self-defense. And from the start, we have been working very closely with the European Union, determined to support Ukraine for as long as it takes. Today, we will uh, discuss our continued support, which is essential to help Ukraine prevail as an independent sovereign state. So, more ammunition needed, but will they be able to get it? Ian Brzezinski is senior fellow at the U.S. think tank, the Atlantic Council, and also a former deputy assistant secretary of defense for Europe and NATO. I mean, Ukrainians are sucking down, using up immense amounts of ammunition every day, some 10,000 rounds of artillery. Uh, this has caused the West to have its weapon stocks drop precipitously. And it's clear that our industry isn't, is, is struggling to keep up with the production requirements to sustain this effort. I mean, it's taking now about twice as long to produce an artillery round and get it to the, to the field. It used to take 12 months, now it's 24 months. So this is a very serious problem that uh, Jens Stoltenberg and his ministers of defense are grappling with. Well, we've heard from the U.S. as well, right? Lloyd Austin saying that the West will ensure Ukraine gets what it needs. But is the West united when it comes to support for Ukraine? Well, you know, the West ha has provided Ukraine a serious amount of assistance, some $50 billion, according to the Secretary of Defense, Austin. And this has enabled Ukraine not only to survive, but also to take back some of the territory it seized from, that Russia seized from it. The concern is that it's still not enough to confidently ensure that Ukraine will have the capacity to decisively win this war on its own terms, that is, retaking back all the territory Russia has seized. And if to, to get that confidence, the West is going to have to provide Ukraine far more offensive punch, longer-range strike like attackums. It can reach far behind Russian lines, striking logistical depots, transport infrastructure, command control centers combat aircraft to provide air defense and additional strike. That's what's going to be needed. We want to be seriously confident that Ukraine is going to prevail. Well, you've described what Ukraine needs, but, you know, once again, there is this sort of reluctance from some uh, in the West, isn't there? How successful do you think the efforts to get what Ukraine needs at the time that it needs it will be? You've hit it right on the, on the nose. This is an issue of time. This is an issue of speed of delivery. And President Zelensky emphasized that in his recent remarks, and he's absolutely right. Time is becoming a lethal weapon used by Putin to reconstitute his forces. He's already got 300,000 troops in Ukraine now. He's sending more in by the thousands. Uh, he, they're, they're digging in, and some of them are actually driving their, the Russian offensive forward. So speed is essential. That was Ian Brzezinski there from the Atlantic Council. Well, as Ukraine continues to fight against Russian offensive, the Kremlin continues to wage another war against critics at home. Draconian laws have been passed to punish dissent. Public criticism of President Putin's special military operation carries the risk of a long prison sentence. Our Russia editor, Steve Rosenberg, traveled to the northern Russian city of Arkhangelsk to see how Russian authorities are silencing opposition to the war. 20-year-old student Olesya Kriptsova has been missing a lot of classes lately. She's under house arrest, her every move monitored by this electronic tag. For social media posts critical of the war in Ukraine, Olesya faces up to 10 years in prison. She's been charged with discrediting the Russian army and justifying terrorism. I never imagined you could get such a long prison sentence for posting on the Internet. I've already been added to the official list of terrorists, the list that includes school shooters and groups like Islamic State. It's crazy. 
Her Putin spider tattoo declares, Big Brother is watching you. It turns out that Alessia's fellow students were watching her posts closely. Just before her arrest, Olesia had discovered this online chat. In it, students, some she knew, were discussing denouncing her to the authorities for her anti-war stance. Some of them wanted to tell the security services or the police. Others were saying it's better just to discredit me. In the end, they decided that it was their duty as patriots to denounce me. The only time Alessia is allowed out is to be in court. Her fashion statement, her protest against young Russians being punished for criticizing the authorities. The judge ruled to keep her under house arrest. From the Russian people, the Russian authorities expect total, unflinching support for the offensive in Ukraine. If you don't support it, you're expected at the very least to stay silent. If you don't stay silent, well, there's a whole string of repressive laws now in Russia for punishing dissent. This opposition politician was convicted of spreading fake news about the army. Ilya Yashin was sent to prison for eight and a half years. For Vladimir Karamurza, the charge is treason. The Kremlin critic and anti-war activist faces 20 years in jail. On the streets of Arkhangelsk, it's not Big Brother watching you. He's a Russian soldier who was killed fighting in Ukraine. The patriotic messaging is persuasive. We found little sympathy here for people with anti-war views who are being prosecuted. Those people who are discrediting our army or spreading fakes, they're sick in the head. Konstantin says they should be sent off to the front line as cannon fodder. As for Olesya, she says she dreams of a Russia that embraces freedom of speech, where Russians are not seen as criminals just for having a different opinion. Steve Rosenberg, BBC News, Arkhangelsk.